Well, let's talk about this Survivor Series, everybody. Eh, not much happened here. <laughs> not much happened? We watched WWE Survivor Actually, Series. Actually, literally, not much did happen. <laughs> I watched the show with Mark. Till the end. And at the end of the show... Why is Mark here? They put that uh, that big video... Because it was yesterday. I didn't want to come back two days in a row. Oh. They put that big graphic up on the screen, alerting us that the show was over. And Mark said, man, that's it? He said, you know, there's a reason I love the Royal Rumble. Because no matter what, you're always going to get some surprise. And I said, well, you got Randy Orton. And he goes, that's not a surprise. He was advertised. I went, yeah, well, what the hell can you do? And all of a sudden, that fucking music hit. And boy, did he get his surprise. <laughs> As we all did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. As we all did. But even when the surprise, nothing happened. Well, he showed up. That's it. Well, yeah. He just showed up. Yeah, you got to watch Raw for more. I guess so. What do you think this is? What, do you think you paid for that show or something? I mean, we all did, That's but... such a complicated question. <laughs> yes. Well, anyway, we watched WWE Survivor Series November 25th, 2023. Uh, I love that this is an indoor show, but they made the pre-show folks go sit on a bench outside alone in the bitter, cold Illinois night. Yeah, sucks to be those people. <laughs> they're all bundled up. You see Christmas. their breath. They were freezing their asses <laughs> There's up. nobody around there. That made me laugh. Then they're, then they're polled about who should get the advantage in the women's war games. So, like, they were so angry that they fucked up the booking and said the baby faces. Yeah. And the booking stayed fucked up. We had the opening video package. I just want to mention, whoever uh, listened to the lyrics of War Pigs and put the Judgment Day's mug shots up there every time Ozzy mentioned the Day of Judgment, well played. Mm-hmm. Well played. Women's War Games match, what I believe is the baby face team of Bianca Belair and Shotzi and Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch versus what I thought was the heel team. <laughs> of Asuka and Kyrie Sane and Bailey and Io Sky. They they thought we were gonna boo Asuka and Kyrie and Io. Well they were the heels going to the show, correct? Yeah, well of course they're the heels, okay. but they, they booked this fucking thing backwards. Like it's they it's sure like did. every year they're determined to do it at least once and try to make it work. Yes. And listen, the match was fun and everything like that, but Jesus, no normal person would watch this match. Like, if you don't watch WWE, there is no way that you would watch this match and conclude the damage control were the heels. I mean, the most obvious thing is they lost the coin toss, or whatever, so the baby faces had the numbers advantage throughout the entire match. The heels were valiantly fighting against all odds. And got a pop every time they hit the ring. Every single time. <laughs> yes. Now, that's the most obvious thing, but that's not the only thing. They were also the ones coming in doing cool dives at the top of the cage. Yeah. I'll throw a trash can on top of me and jump. The whole place would go crazy. Thing that was cool. I do have to say, by the way, and by the way, it was the Ruffles poll. The fans voted. It was not a coin toss for the women. Hmm. But the, the uh, you know, I was mentioning that every time the heels hit the ring, they got a baby face pop. And the response I heard was, well, they all got baby face pops. Hmm. Well, no shit, because the other team were baby faces. <laughs> Of course they got babyface pops. The point is the heels were not supposed to get babyface pops. Well, and then, that's even more ridiculous when you watch the main event, when, in fact, the heels did not get babyface pops every time they hit the ring. They got booed every time yeah. because they booked the match. That match they booked exactly right. Exactly right. Like, not just the uh, heels having the advantage, but, like, Every time the heels were in, they destroyed the baby faces for the entire period. Uh, well, so you were begging for a baby face to come in. Not this match. This match was totally backwards. So in addition to having the numbers disadvantaged, doing all the cool moves, and uh, I think it was Eo who uh, sorry, no, it was Kyrie who had the uh, neon yeah Kyrie had the neon Genesis Evangelion gear. So of course everyone was going to cheer her. But uh, then, what's the one thing? All wrestling fans, but especially WWE fans, want from their wrestling in 2023. They want these tables. fucking tables. Goddamn tables. Why? So Asuka comes out. She's, uh, I don't think she's the last person. No, she's the last no, person. No, she was. She was the yeah, last person. Was. And uh, they're cheering for her because she's going to come in and make the save. She goes into the ring and she gets sticks. And they all boo. But she goes back into the ring and they go, yay! And she gets more sticks. And they go, boo! And she goes back into the ring and they go, Yay! And she finally pulls at the table, and they lose their goddamn minds. <laughs> they let the last heel into the ring get the fucking table. I was stunned. But they did. 
and away she went. And then they set up the table and everyone cheered. Then they started kicking ass, Oscar's, uh, beating the shit out of these spitting mist on baby Shotzi, faces. hitting a big missile drop kick, and he cheered. And then the finish, eventually, the I'll call them baby faces. Becky and Charlotte and their team rally. They're working together. They're friends because the other thing wrestling fans want in twenty twenty three is everyone to be friends. They're working together. They use all the plunder. Charlotte goes for the spear, but Bailey, heroic. Noble, valiant, selfless Bailey sacrifices herself, pushes one of her friends out of the way, takes the spear. So these asshole baby faces, these dicks, kill her four on one and slam her through a table and pin her and win. It was fun, but I was so confused. Well, I thought this was a four star match, mostly because of the period once everybody was actually in the cage. The first non-War Games portion where it was just the intervals, it was like, forget even the fact that they did it backwards, but it really wasn't that exciting. It's just, uh, we wrestle for a while, you know, here comes a baby face, and then here comes a heel, and there was like nothing really exciting about it. But once all of the, all of the, once everybody was in the ring, and we had the table, and now the crowd's going nuts, and they're, this is awesome chance, it became an excellent match from that point forward. And the funny thing is, I mentioned on the Dave show yesterday that the scariest spot in the match was Charlotte doing a moonsault off the cage. And it was brought to my attention. Remember that spot where uh, EO put a trash can over her head and did a high cross? Yeah. And yes, I do remember that. And that was significantly safer than when Charlotte did that moonsault. And if you don't believe me, you can go on social media and you can see a photo of the top of EO Sky's head which has a big fucking gash from about here to here because Charlotte did a moonsault off the cage and hit uh. nothing but knee right on poor EO's head. I thought she killed her. And it's like every time Charlotte does that moonsault, it's never like lay out and, and get caught. It's always, I'm going to do a backflip land on my feet. Everyone else, yeah. put your hands out and fall down. Well, knee right to the head of poor... Uh, mm. And I don't think she had a concussion, thank God. I don't think she was knocked out or anything, but man, she got bonked on top of her head. And she got right back into it, did everything. But uh, that was scary. And then we had the manhandle slam and the pin, and I thought it turned into a excellent match there by the end. The uh, the very first two baby faces, I say in quotes, um, Shotzi and uh, and Becky Lynch against um, uh, against Bailey, and they set up some contrived spot on the top ropes and they fumbled they fumbled around up there for what seemed like an eternity and the payoff was absolutely nothing so i have to agree with brian the match didn't really start until what used to be called the match beyond began but um fun match uh shades of uh great sasuke with eo in the trash can um yeah it was fun I would say the match beyond was a solid four stars, and the first half was a solid two and a half. We're going to split hairs here. Fair enough. And by the way, you know they've been teasing uh, Damage Control turning on Bailey since, I think, the spring. <laughs> it is now uh, about to be December. They are taking their sweet time with all of these stories. But it is abundantly clear when Bailey did everything in her power to stop her team from losing taking the bullet, and then finally getting beaten in the end, she's fucked. Yeah, the visual of all the other girls on one side of the ring and Bailey lay, laying in a pile of rubble, that kind of sealed the deal for me. Let's see. We had a wacky commercial for Ruffles with the Alpha Academy and whoever the women's tag champs are and Pretty Deadly and Truth, who got a giant pop in 2023. Well, he's been gone for over a year. He tore his quad, mm -hmm. needed multiple surgeries, and this was his first appearance since he got hurt. So, yeah, he got a huge pop. Good for him. And he still looks amazing in 2023. Yeah. Sami Zayn and Jay Uso are very concerned because Randy Orton is not there yet. They tease this no-show throughout the entire show. And uh, Jay is having self... He's, he's feeling guilty. Why would he team with me? And uh, Sami points out that he and Jay won war games together last year. He's still, he still got Jay's back. This was amazingly... Well, it seemed amazingly stupid, but it ended up being amazingly smart what they did here because 
if you watch the show with the presumption that CM Punk was not coming in, what an absolutely stupid decision to claim that Randy Orton wasn't there because it immediately got CM Punk chance started. And they turned the mics down, but I had people from the building telling me that they're chanting CM Punk, and I thought, why the fuck would you do this? Like, you got to get Randy out there quick because you can't possibly be doing the match and have people chanting CM Punk, which, in fact, is exactly what happened in the match. But as it turns out, they were bringing back CM Punk, and so, in hindsight, it was actually a remarkably clever thing that they did throughout this show here because they got you expecting Randy Orton, a sizable uh, portion of the crowd wanting CM Punk, and in the end, everybody got everybody that they wanted. Exactly. So it did work out great. And they did, they did turn the mics down for the CM Punk chants, which further made me think that uh, he wasn't coming. But I was told in the building, nobody had their CM Punk signs confiscated. Oh, really? Mm. Which should have been a clue. Mm. Gunther versus Miz. Yes. I knew this match was happening, but I had seen very, very little of the build. And so I watched this entire video package paying very, very close attention. From the very first spot, where they were, Imperium was on Miz TV and started to uh, tear it down, and he attacked the other two guys and turned around, and Gunther hit one giant chop, and Miz went down, and Miz had the best facial expression. It wasn't shock. It wasn't pain. It was outrage. I could just see him looking up and saying, in Buddy Wayne's voice, it's fake! You ain't getting fake with this Gunther, brother. No. Gunther makes things, makes things very clear for Mike. Refuses to call him Miz. Miz is a stupid name. His name is Mike Mizanin. <laughs> I will beat respect into you. And he laughs about this. You are a weirdo, he says, who got beat up in high school, and you don't belong in my ring. So we had a second match where they did everything possible to make me cheer for the heel. Maybe it's just me. No. It's- <laughs> Gunther hits one mighty chop. I begin to pop my fists in the air with glee. Miz hits a puny, impotent chops. You have no effect. Drags Gunther down, gets a ring post figure four, but he springboards right into a boot, and then it's a Gunther match. And he grinds this guy into paste. Bunch of chops. Big ol' suplex. Miz makes a comeback, takes up the knee, looks to the crowd for reaction. Doesn't get much. Because it's Gunther. We all want to see Gunther kill him. Gets the... Yes, kicks. It takes, takes about three dozen kicks, but fans finally start chanting along. But there are also some boos for him. Big old drop kick and a powerbomb for Gunther. And Michael Cole says, slapping the Miz. Embarrassing him. Humiliating him. And I said, yes, give me more! A turnbuckle gets yanked off. Miz hits a pair of low blows. The skull-crushing finale gets two off of that. Box him in the cradle gets two more off of that. And Gunther hits a big lariat and a wonky frog splash. And Gunther's frog splash is always wonky. But he hit this. I think he's expecting Miz to move. But hmm. either way, he uh, came down in a very strange position onto Miz's back and then went to a Boston Crab and Miz frantically tapped out because he knew Gunther was a better man. We all knew Gunther was a better man. I mean, this is like a two and three quarter star match, but it's my favorite. Brother, I gave it three match. and a half. Whatever. This, oh. was a, this was a low level Gunther match and a high level Miz match. Yep. There you is go. exactly what this was. And I thought that Miz, I mean, I don't know, man. His kicks fucking suck. Yeah. And he's trying to throw all these kicks, and they're all completely unbelievable. And to his credit, he took a great beating. Mm-hmm. He, he, he was a great victim. He was. He was. Gunther, you know, did a good job with him. Miz tried. And, you know, he did get one big pop. I mean, you give the guy two low blows and you're finished, of course you're going to get a reaction. But it was a good reaction. And I did I did appreciate that given, had he won, he would have tied Jericho for the most Intercontinental Championship reigns. Gunther beat him with a lion tamer to put an end to that hope. That was very poetic. Indeed. That, that brought it up an extra half star for me. I thought the match was, was very good for what it was. But, uh... Thank God I didn't have to deal uh, with people on Twitter saying that Miz carried Gunther or any of the shit like that I would heard like four mm. years ago. I think everyone knows the deal now, so I can't get mad. It was uh, it was fine. And while it was fun to see Miz get a pounding, um, Miz actually impressed me in this match. I thought he did very well, and he, he met the fire that uh, Gunther 
had for him or threw at him and and I thought Miz uh I thought Miz stepped it up a little bit this uh match yeah. which he nah. really should have <laughs> kind of well it was, it was step up or die I mean listen <laughs> they they did a deal for for probably the past month maybe month and a half you know they've been kind of doing the story about how Miz is going to prove himself he's going to prove that he's actually whatever yeah I wouldn't go that and far. so you know every now and then he'll pull out a running hurricane rana or he'll do some other moves and it's like he does them and he's working hard but none of it looks all that good no it still looks like he's he's whatever no miz was not great in this match rough is great he just wasn't he did he did a he did an acceptable job in a, in a Gunther match. Yes. I don't know how you can... You have to have watched no Gunther matches ever to watch this match and come to the conclusion that Miz did a great job because it was one of the worst Gunther matches you will ever see. But it was still very good because most of Gunther matches are fucking awesome. I, I will say that Miz exceeded his usual level this match. It was a bizarre styles clash, and in the end, it was very good. Let's just say that. Uh, Judgment Day are talking about how great they are. They're very happy. Randy's not there. Even if he does show up, they're going to poison the other team from the inside. They're all jolly. <laughs> Santos Escobar versus Dragon Lee. Dragon Lee got a cape. Looks even more like Batman now. Uh, <laughs> this was funny because it's two uh, two Mexican stars who had long, uh, long, productive, successful careers in Lucha Libre coming in during a WWE heavyweight match. Mm-hmm. There's like a couple dives and one destroyer, maybe a Rana here or there, but by and large, Santos jumped at the bell, worked over the leg, there was a big comeback and a finish, and that was that. I think my favorite part was when uh, he's trying to break Dragon Lee's leg like he did to Ray, Ray Jr. when he kicked the stairs into him, and I'm pretty sure I heard a fan scream out, he needs his career! <laughs> I mean, they laugh. So, uh, even Graves is pointing out that Santos Escobar is not doing much high-flying in this match, uh... We get the crowd chanting something very rude in Spanish and this thing very rude in English. Very talented, multilingual crowd here. They can uh, berate the man in any language. And eventually, uh, Dragon Lee muscles him up for a power bomb for a near fall, and then Santos just grabs him, hits a destroyer, gets a phantom driver, and wins. Finish kind of came out of nowhere, but the match was good. I thought it was a good match. I was disappointed in the sense that, well, I mean, the big disappointment was they only got eight minutes. And yeah. you can only do so much in eight minutes. But they had that uh, Dragon Lee match with Axiom on SmackDown. That match was so fucking awesome because they let him go out and do anything they wanted. And they let them go out and have a match like they were in Arena Mexico or the G1 or AEW. They would have had the exact same match anywhere on Earth. They did everything in that match. And so I thought, man, Dragon Lee and Santos, it's on pay-per-view. Man, they're going to tear it up. And instead, they had an eight-minute, three and a quarter star match with a finish, and that was that. I would have, I would have enjoyed more. I called my son into the room. I said, "This is going to be a good one, son." He sat down. Eight minutes later, he got up and he goes, "That was it, huh?" I was like, yeah, I just, it was there. But yeah, yeah, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't the Lucha Libre classic I was expecting. Rhea Ripley versus Zoe Stark. Oh, we had uh, Ellie Knight and the New Day plugging Slim Jims. And the New Day arriving in the Slim Jims mobile. Zoe Stark versus Rhea Ripley, who came out looking like a cross of Brandon Lee's Crow and Heath Ledger's Joker. Okay. I was going to say Edward Scissorhands. But... Oh, yeah, that's not bad. That's not I bad. was going to say Sensational Sherry. Yeah. Awesome. There's something about her hair and the outfit she was wearing, and we're watching those Saturday night's main events. Yeah, yeah. She looked goofy, that's for sure. In a cool way, but goofy. Uh, so this is a sloppy extended squash, but one of the better sloppy extended squashes you'll see. Brother, I ain't saying any match is sloppy if it is not that collision match with... Oh, that was much sloppier. Oh, my God. House of Black and Gravity yeah. and Commander. Yeah, Gravity won. My God, Gravity. And I don't mean the wrestler. I mean the force no. of nature. <laughs> Horror. Yeah. Uh, but that's... We're getting ahead of ourselves. So, Rhea just beat her and beat her and beat her. She's doing old school Super Dragon style curb stomps. Tried a beal or a choke slam or something off the top rope, and both bodies fell, and nobody seemed sure what happened. Rhea didn't know. Zoe didn't know. The ref didn't know. None of the announcers knew. The fans didn't know. But Zoe started to come back after that. And uh, gets a suplex and a slide. Yeah, what the fuck was that thing supposed to be off the top? I haven't got a clue. I was flabbergasted. 
I have no idea. Like, usually I can tell what a botched spot was supposed to be. Yes. <laughs> and actually, that's kind of the story of uh, of Saturday night, because there were a bunch of them on AEW as well, where, what the fuck were you trying? What were you trying here? I don't know. They just did something. I don't know who was supposed to hurt, and neither sold it. So, that was a move, all right. They did the a news. move. The good news is they took an hour to set it up, too. <laughs> Uh, so Rhea blocks the Z360, hits Riptide, and wins, and there you go. Person says, I think it was supposed to be a corkscrew arm drag from No Mercy. What? What? The video game? That would be a deep cut. Yeah. You know, people have been waxing... It looked like a video game glitch. It did look like a glitch. <laughs> is what it uh, looked like. People have been waxing nostalgic about the No Mercy and uh, the other N64 games for... Gosh, two decades now. And, well, they were great. And still are, but uh, I never heard anyone say, you know what I loved about those No Mercy games? The reverse arm drag thing. Yeah, that's a, that's a one. The Alpha Academy shows off some merch, and then it's time for the men's war games match. Randy is still not there. Cody assures his team he will make it, trust me. But for now, they go off to war. So the men's war games match. Finn Balor, Damian Priest, Dominic Mysterio, and J.D. McDonough, Andrew McIntyre. Versus Cody Rhodes and Jey Uso and Sami Zayn and Seth Rollins and Randy, or- Randy Orton. Uh, well, I- at the beginning, there was no Randy Orton. An empty cage. Mm-hmm. And uh, Would he make it or not? So we talked about this earlier. This was my favorite WWE War Games match. Because they did by far the best job of sticking to the formula until it was time. They had five minutes here with Finn Balor and Seth... And uh, Seth essentially whipped his ass the entire time. And then the heels had the advantage and got in there. J.D. McDonough was next in. And he brought in a couple of sticks. And they just beat Seth with sticks for three minutes until it was time for the save. They beat him. And they choked him. There was like one hope spot. And they cut him off and choked him and beat him. That's all it is. That's all I want from War Games. I don't want a thousand cool moves, especially from the heels. I want a beating. Uh, and they kept this They kept this up the whole way. Jay's the next man in, just watching him run into the ring. Drew's in his cage, smoldering. Can't believe this guy's still alive. So Jay's running wild until it's time for the third judgment person. Exactly. He ran wild the whole time. Yes. Yes. That's very important. This is... Because I've seen a thousand War Games matches. Yes. Where even if they get the order of entry correct, it's like, you know, the baby faces... It's usually like, you know, the heels come in and they run wild, but then the baby faces cut them off. Yes, before the and next like, person comes the in. The baby faces are having a fine time and then another baby face comes in. Yes. It's like, what the fuck kind of drama is that? It's non existent right. drama. You got to beat the fuck out of this guy. So people are begging for a baby face to come in and even the odds. And they did that in every single one of these here. Every single one they did it right. And the fans went nuts for all these people hitting the ring. Except the heels, they booed all of the heels. They still went nuts. Because that's what you're supposed to fucking do. They went do. nuts in a negative way. Yes. Yes. So Drew can't wait to kill uh, Jay, and it's time for the next member of their team to go in there. Uh, but the cage opens, and Drew says forward, but Damian Priest blocks him. He says, no, we're sticking to the plan. And he gets in there, and I think it was three on two. If, yeah, it was three on two here. So even though his team has the numbers advantage, the baby aces were just running wild for three minutes. So he gets in there and finds himself staring down Jay and Seth. And they briefly swarm him and get the better of him, but then his friends recover, and the numbers game comes into play, and the team with more guys turns the tide and beats their ass. Uh, Sammy is next in. He also has to fight his way in, but he's running wild. The crowd is singing the Olay song, and Michael Cole notes El Generico must be somewhere nearby. Finally, Drew McIntyre gets his chance. He's the fourth man in for his team. And he stalks his way down to the ring. And he gets in there... And Jay is way over on the other side. All he wants to do is kill Jay Uso. There's other fuckers in his way. So he has to stop and kill Seth, has to kill Sammy, and he kills him. Kills him, kills him, kills him. And he turns and he spots Jay, and he stalks and he takes a sweet time with this, and he gets his revenge and gives this guy the beating he's wanted to give him for so damn, damn long. And he's smack talking him. All you had to do was say sorry and acknowledge what you did. Bash, bash, bash. <laughs> So there was a host spot here where uh, Jay and Sammy managed to hit a 1D together, but they still got cut off, and Justin Day was winning when the Rhodes family 
entered War Games. Cody's coming out. The crowd's chanting for Dusty. It's quite awesome. They say his father created War Games. Just like Cody created a brand new event in this city as that's, well. That's also true. I went, holy shit, this is a new WWE. It's a strange what time. What the fuck? It is a strange time. He finds a bull rope, but as he gets this bull rope up into the ring, who grabs the other end but Seth? And they are not necessarily chummy. And that's my other favorite thing about this match. They did not ignore the violent, brutal histories all these guys had with each other. We had references to Seth and Cody's brutal feud. Uh, the whole thing is built around Drew hitting Jay and Randy hitting Jay. Uh, we had uh, S- Seth and uh, Drew apparently had a few that I've completely forgotten about. But that was talked about at length. And all these guys had to either revisit... Seth and Drew? <laughs> that was a month ago. Oh, there you go. That, that was right, yeah. Uh, anyway, they, uh, uh, they had to either revisit these rivalries and open up old, old wounds... Or put the past behind them and find a way to work together. But the point is, you as a fan were rewarded for paying attention. And they don't often do that, but they did here. I loved it. So, the uh, Cody enters. He and Seth eventually make peace. They're running wild with the ball rope together, beating everybody up. There's only one guy left for the Judgment Day. It's Dominic Mysterio. So, the whole last minute of this segment, it took me a while to figure it out with the crowd saying, Dom, you suck. Dom, you suck. So Dom is the fifth man in. And here's the great thing. Once you have established the proper formula, you can do variations on it. So Dominic hits this cage, and everyone thinks, man, he's got the numbers advantage for the Judgment Day. They're going to beat ass again. But he gets in this cage. He locks the door. He turns around, and he sees four pissed-off baby safe faces waiting for him. <laughs> and they just slaughter him. And the place is going absolutely crazy, absolutely nuts. And eventually, it doesn't last forever. And uh, it's five on four. And uh, the Judgment Day is kicking ass. We have two men choke slamming three. And it's cool when giants do cool stuff like that. All the small guys hit top rope moves. Seth gets razor's edge through a table. The Judgment Day is standing tall. It's time for whatever the baby faces have on tap to be the fifth person. They're chanting for Randy. They're chanting for CM Punk. There's people booing the people chanting for CM Punk. We don't know who it is. And nobody comes out. First, nobody comes out. And here comes Rhea with that briefcase. Rhea is going to cash in and beat Seth. Well, no, she's going to keep the briefcase so that <laughs> Priest can Priest. I see. destroy Seth. That makes more sense. Regardless, this never happens because voices are heard. And it turns out the Viper is here. And Randy Orton comes out and his time off has been spent entirely in the gym and eating protein. This guy was gigantic. And shredded. Yeah. This guy looked like The Rock. He looked like The Rock. He looked like Orton of 2004. Yeah, not quite, uh, you know, the current Rock, but... Uh, right. He was a goddamn big fucking dude. He was. He stood across from Drew McIntyre, mm-hmm. and I was like, this guy is bigger than Drew McIntyre, and that's a big dude. Yes. Randy was huge. Remember that promo where Vince told him he had a neck like a stack of dimes? I, I do. do. <laughs> now it's like fucking... A tree stump. Yeah, something. Couldn't think of a big enough coin. No. He's that coin that the magician pulls out at the end that's like this big. Is he, the comedy gig. He, he's the coin Dragon Lee has hanging up the bat cave. Yes. yes. So uh, the Judgment Day are terrified of this man. They just stand there and say, holy Christ, he's enormous. I don't want to fight him. Eventually, Dom draws the short straw. He has to go get killed, and killed he is. And uh, they kind of take turns being killed by Randy. It's Randy and Drew. I've forgotten the Randy Orton Drew McIntyre feud. That's the one I've forgotten. But uh, Priest lays out Orton and, and we got a five way draping DDT. Five, yeah, there, there was Michael one. Cole alerts us. It was vintage war games. Sure, sure. I was like, "Fuck you! That's never ever happened in war games <laughs> ever." Yes, yes. I mean, vintage war games. So Orton is about to lay uh, has. He's the only one standing. The other nine guys are all down. And he starts to pump, punch the mat like he's new, doing RKO. And he turns to target Jay. Oh, no. Jay was right. They can't trust him. But Jay Orton does not murder Jay Uso. He lectures him. And uh, at mid-lecture, Jay dives to save Orton from Damien. And that's really the end. Parade of finishers. Starts with an RKO. Uh, there's a ring-to-ring Uso splash. And then they spend, like... You, you mentioned Rhea Ripley spending an hour on the top rope. They spent forever getting J.D. Madonna up to the top of the cage mm-hmm. and throwing him down into an RKO. And that's what happened. 
And uh, Cody hit a crossroads on Priest, on Priest, pinned him. His team won. I love this match. Well, it's very interesting that they uh, they pinned Priest. Yeah. Because they killed that J.D. McDonough. And he got RKO'd. And, you know, that's that's the uh, that is would seem to be the obvious finish. But they pinned Priest. And I think the reason that they did that is because this split is coming sooner rather than later. And mm-hmm. Priest is going to go babyface. And uh, that's another one they've been teasing for like seven months or something like that. But I think that time is, is uh, by imminent, I mean within the next several months. That's coming. Between now and WrestleMania? Watch it happen tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get the negative out of the way first. The Judgment Day comes out, and they are a cool looking bunch of heels. They got their, they all got their, their outfits and everything looks, everything about them is cool. And this Seth Rollins comes out and he's got two my pillows strapped to each shoulder. <laughs> he's a tool. And his song and MC Hammer would have looked at this outfit and said, ridiculous. He is such a dork. Why can't he? He's such a great wrestler. Why does he have to be such a dork? But uh, anyway, the match was great. I loved uh, I loved the match. It, again, it made sense. Uh, this is the way you do war games. And, uh, you know, you stick to the way it's supposed to be done, and yeah, it's probably going to be good. Well, then CM Punk came out. He sure did. And... Uh... That was very clever. They put that fucking graphic on the screen. It was. I was. The, 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 I was the, the, the showing copyright Mark logo the door. and all this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they hit this guy's music, and holy shit! It's funny because, like, you know, there were CM Punk chants, but there weren't that many, and it wasn't that loud. And every time they started, there would be people that would boo them when they started to do the chant. And you know, the the, the amazing thing is, like, you know, they the reason they signed CM Punk was they've decided this is what the fans want. And the funny thing is, I watch every single one of these shows, and there have been punk teases for a long time, and uh, it never got that big of a reaction. Shinsuke Nakamura, for like two straight weeks, was using the GTS Mm -hmm. in matches. And the first week, he did the GTS on the stage, and there was no reaction whatsoever. And then, you know, people were like, well, you know, it was on the stage, maybe people didn't see it. Like, you couldn't see something on the fucking stage. And then, so the next week, he does it right smack dab in the middle of the ring. No reaction. No CM Punk chants. Nothing. So I thought, man, these people don't give a shit about CM Punk. And so they did this show, and then they did that tease that Randy wouldn't be there, and you got the first CM Punk chant. And then we did have chants off and on in the main event, but, you know, every time the chant got started, another group would try to boo them down. But then, man, they hit this guy's music, and every last single person in this building lost their fucking minds they went crazy for this guy and he came out and he celebrated with the people and he hugged these fans here in chicago and he let him scream into the camera while he stood there smirking and he's back brother and we'll see how it goes when he does his first raw appearance in 10 years tomorrow night in nashville perfect <laughs> Nashville, Tennessee. How about that? What uh, what is the over under on how long he stays this time? I don't know if we have an over under. There's got to be. He's got to piss somebody off like already. Well, well, you know there was some definitely people that weren't thrilled. <laughs> heard well, but I actually heard uh, the morale was far lower in AW. Actually, actually that's well, true. the second and, time or the first time? Yesterday. <laughs> Like really? They, they thought they thought that him showing up there just made them look totally second rate. Mm. Well, and this guy did. won. And you know, part of the problem was if you watch Survivor Series in Collision, whew, they were second rate. Holy smoke. On, on November twenty fifth, twenty twenty three, AEW was second rate. That collision Let's show. Let's just be clear. Chimney fucking Christmas. And I should mention that I've been on a roll of being never wrong, but in fact, I made a one hundred dollar bet with Eddie. That CM Punk was not going to be in Uh-oh. Chicago. And in fact, Eddie won. Oh. Huh. And so even though yes. Eddie won. You sent him quarters? He sent me forty dollars. What? 
because I guess his his deal is I need to buy a CM Punk shirt and wear it here on this show. Ah, I see. Wow. Which I will do. And uh, the rest of the money goes to uh, Whale Scout. So thank you, Eddie, for that. Win-win. I will uh, make sure that gets out there. And, yes, uh, I lost that bet. CM Punk mm. is back. So uh, there you go. Well, I said this online, and I got a lot of popular feedback, so I'll share it here. CM Punk has spent his entire career enraging the people he works with, napalming every bridge in his path, but being such a star that his enemies break their backs to restore those bridges and welcome him back with open arms. A perfect pro wrestler, in other words. Well, yeah, but I mean, the reality is uh, it was not his enemies. It was it was Nick Khan and Triple H. They were the two guys that made this call. Sure. And, uh, and I'm he, sure Nick Khan has no even though, hard uh, feelings. <laughs> well, of course he doesn't. Yeah. But even though... Uh, you know, everybody in the War Games main event knew that uh, he was coming out at the end of the show. They told him before the match. It's like they didn't tell anybody else. Yeah. And nobody knew. And I got to figure out what's going on with, like, all those weird teases that they had. Because Corey Graves was saying all sorts of weird things. And that Nakamura GTS two weeks in a row. And then never again, by the way. They totally dropped it after the first two weeks. I got to find out who knew what when and and all of that, but uh, it was a it was a very well kept secret from everybody, which led a lot of people to be very unhappy that they were kept in the dark about this one. Not to stir the turd, but I will read what I wrote on Twitter. Imagine beating cancer and then wanting it back. Yeah, well, we'll see how it plays out. We'll see how it goes. Maybe it'll be great. It, it might be. I uh, I got to give it up to Punk, though. He's. I did laugh. Somehow, <laughs> somehow you can do exactly what you want, and people will still fawn over you and want you to work for them. It's it's actually incredible. And he comes out in a plain white T-shirt and a totally derpy hair, hairdo. <laughs> like, <laughs> he has zero effort in his appearance. It's me in Chicago. I don't have to do anything. They'll love me anyway. And they did. God bless him. Anyway. That was Survivor Series. That was a memorable, memorable, memorable show. Show was. Yeah. So, Craig, you didn't watch Collision. Did you watch Rampage? I I watched.